Six-year-old boy refused to take a bath. Mother threatened to take out a knife. The boy still wouldn't wash. The irritated mother chose to do it herself, but I did not expect the knife into the boy's stomach. The blood flowed on the ground red sting. While the mother was lost in thought for a moment, the boy fought back and knocked off the knife. Then pushed the mother hit the wall and fainted. He forced himself out of the bathroom to endure the pain. He took the phone from the table and went straight to the balcony, closing the door. Finally hid in a washing machine. He was in so much pain that every step he took was a painful one, but he had no choice but to die by his mother's knife if it didn't go. The boy covered his wounds and called the police, but the police couldn't find the source of the phone, nor could they find the phone's call records. Is this just a prank? But Captain Shalju still decided to send the ECU emergency squad. The mother had woken up by now. She took a knife and searched for her son everywhere. The police immediately deployed to rescue the boy. But the boy did not know his mother's name, nor did he know where this place was. It turns out that he was brought to this home not long ago. He hadn't left the house since then. He had been kept in captivity by his mother. Finally, the boy provided the key information about the pink window opposite his house. According to the police, immediately locked the boy's neighborhood. And the mother also returned home because of the fruitless search outside. With the blood lost little by little, the boy was about to faint from physical exhaustion, and the phone in his hand slipped weakly. A subtle sound caught the mother's attention. He finally opened the balcony door. With a dagger in his hand, the boy was about to be found. In the nick of time, he turned to leave, but before the boy and the robot could breathe a sigh of relief, he came back again, looking at the blood flowing from the washing machine pipes. With a creepy smile, Captain Xiaoju heard footsteps approach and threw a cell phone. The mother wanted to kill her own son. The boy rushed to find a place to hide, but the mother still wouldn't let him go. At this moment, the boy was like a lamb waiting to be slaughtered. It looked out and saw his mother's twisted and horrible face, slowly turning towards him. Then, the boy's cries rang out in the operator's earpiece. Danger was approaching, but the police still haven't found the boy's home address. The boy cried out in grief that his mother was sorry, but the hard-hearted mother picked him up from the washing machine. Although he was covered in blood, but the mother was not moved at all. Even if he hadn't been killed, he would have bled to death in the end. At that moment, Captain Xiaoju made full use of his keen hearing to find the location. She knew she couldn't mess up at this time. She forced herself to hold her breath. She heard a clear and pleasant sound. Finally, she was sure that it was the sound of wind chimes. In addition, there was a dog barking. The police followed this lead. They were able to locate the suspect's address. But by now, the boy had been dragged to the sofa by his mother. Time was running out. At that moment, Xiao Ju spoke up to stop the mother. She also finally saw a talking phone. When she learned it, that the police would soon come to her door, she grabbed the boy by the hair. She grabbed him by the hair and choked him again. She kept mumbling strange words. The whole person was in a state of anxiety and anxiety. The tense spirit is also about to break. The perceptive Xiao Ju guessed from her mutterings. The mother had also been abused as a child. That's why her mood was so erratic. The woman frowned because what she said was true. The mother had her son by the throat. She wanted to kill him, but when Xiao Ju told the truth that the mother had also been abused, the mother finally let go of her hand, looking at her son who kept begging for mercy. He kept shouting, I'm sorry, mom, I won't dare to do it again. Looking at the child in front of me, like seeing herself as a child, she put her hand over the child's wound. Good thing the police were about to arrive, but then the door opened and a man came in. The phone was cut off. When the police arrived, the boy was gone. All that was left was the woman sitting frouncing on the floor. They looked everywhere but couldn't find him. The boy's mother's eyes were blank and she didn't say a word. Xiao Ju heard from the sound of the door being pushed. The boy should have been taken away. The woman's husband was afraid that the abuse would be discovered. So he took the boy away. The police immediately issued a wanted notice. And police officer Xiao Zhang went to the neighborhood management office to ask the administrator whether there was a place nearby where the child could be hidden. Time was short, but the administrator did not slow to give him a glass of water. Then he took the man to the underground machine room for inspection. But not long after entering Xiao Zhang fainted on the ground. It turned out that the administrator was the adopted father of the boy's mother. Just kill the boy. He could get a high insurance pension. Two children had already been killed before. The woman's husband was also killed. For what he calls a pension, there have been five victims. There are even more. The administrator took out a syringe and prepared to kill him. Xiao Zhang, who was sweeping the floor, grabbed his hand. He also took out his phone, which was recording. It turns out that Xiao Zhang had already found. The janitor had the same wind chimes as the boy's home on his desk. There are also child abuse tools on it. There was also a bottle of muscle relaxant in the trash can. So when the janitor handed him the tea, Xiao Zhang pretended to drink it but secretly spit it out. As long as it is done, it will leave traces. Finally, Xiao Zhang sent the administrator to prison for retirement. The boy was eventually rescued. He was lying in the hospital bed after contacting Xiao Chu. He said thank you many times 
times. He also wanted Xiao Zhu to help his mother. The child's tender words were kind and strong. Police officers quietly wiped tears for this understanding child. Until Xiao Zhu agreed, the boy nodded his head in reassurance. The mother is both the abuser and the victim. When she let go of the boy, she actually saved herself. Well, that's the end of the story. We'll see you on the next video.